I'll just want to say that Root of Our Youth and Root of Us has been just a tremendous partner for League of Education Voters. Fernell is a gift to us all. Uh, Fernell Miller knows more about how to reach students, how to reach adults, than like 50,000 of me put together. I, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate you. So, yeah, it's, you're, you're amazing. This is our first time getting to see each other in person. We've been working together for since 2020. And all the youth that you've had on your, there's some of them here today, but just so grateful for the opportunity to connect, just to see you in live person. Yeah. And to connect with everybody, yes. And um, where'd she go? Come here. We work in the same district. Yeah, we work together. For and we've seen each other at lots of the advocating events where we are knocking our heads against the yeah, I'll tell, I'll, t I'll tell more about it in just a second. <laughs> but thank you and congratulations again. Thanks for coming to be here to be with us today. And um, before I start anything, I'm just going to invite you to um, be with me first. And I have some things for you to come and look at since we're a big group. I usually do a circle and put it on the floor and we're all around and we're participating. So we're going to do that. Um, you're welcome to bring your chairs and do all of this. But before you do... Um, I'm going to give Demar Demar's time to, time to eat. She's got a friend. We're just going to relax a little bit because aren't we the kind of the last thing of the day? So we're going to hold a very special, powerful circle. And what I wanted to say or what I was thinking as you were speaking was um, the district that we work in, I started there as a fifth grader. And I was the only black child in the school in elementary, one of two in the middle school, and one of four in the 4A high school, 2,500 students. As I have retired after, well, I went to school there and um, I could show up really strong and as, as of use, meaning I was great and welcomed in and included on the team because I was fast, in the gym because I could tumble, I was a gymnast. Um, in the debate, you know, I could be included, but outside of that, inclusion I was nowhere and invisible and standing out you know like a <laughs> chocolate chip in milk you know so it's been um, I when I graduated from our high school <laughs> um, I couldn't wait to like ugh, get me out of this isolation it's racial isolation is what it is and that's here in Washington everywhere because you know percentage wise there's only nine black people here <laughs> so um, it's very difficult to find community, find support, find just camaraderie uh, without having to, you know, oh, explain yourself. And what are you talking about? My son, who's 30, just asked me the other day, Mom, do I, do I, am I hard to understand? Am I not articulate? I'm like, no, it's, it's your, your disability, why people can't hear you and listen to you is because your blackness. And I was just holding, I've been here kind of all day back in the storage room holding another conference before I came out here to speak on anti-blackness and I had everybody take their phone out and set their timer. And as I'm speaking, the timer's going, I said, just when you notice that you look at the timer, turn it off. So that can tell me um, how much somatic response or rise comes up that you want to interrupt blackness because as a 62-year-old black woman on the planet, I can count on um, when I take a microphone to speak or speak in any space, especially predominantly white spaces, I get about 20, 28 seconds is my record before I'm interrupted, pushed back, stop talking, um, my words taken and put in somebody else's mouth. All of those things happen. And so I, I was talking really fast, 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 because I knew I'm going to be interrupted any second now. So I hold circle. I hold space like this because everybody gets a chance not just to talk, but to be. And that's what kept young people coming in since um, the pandemic was that beautiful lining, silver lining of the Zoom call because we could unisolate. All of a sudden, I could open a Zoom call and, and I could have the whole entire state and out of the state in one place. And so I keep holding Saturday Sisterhood, um, self-care meetings every Saturday. Again, after, after I'm done here, I'm gonna open the link and all I get to see 
what I never had in elementary, middle school, high school, all through college, my entire teaching career of 40 years in this district. And as I left, I'm the last black educator in front of students on a daily basis in the entire district. Did you know that? I can't name anybody coming behind me. I, I still don't know how to like even like put my brain around it to articulate like wh what did you just, what happened? I'm the only one? And I, I kind of came back to the district to disrupt that whiteness that was so tight because I'm like, oh, I know what's going on here. I know the, the, the perpetual, um, the, the lie, the omission, the deletion, the erasure, all of that that's not being said. Um, my parents are educators. Their parents educators. Their, my great-grandparents educators on both sides. My parents' siblings, all four of my dad's sisters are educators. My mom's brothers, I, I, that's all I thought black people did really was be educators. I'm like, I don't, like, hey, I don't know. And I didn't have any intention of being an educator because I'm like, ah, we already did that. I want to do something else. But dang, that DNA is strong. <laughs> like, oh, dang it. And um, my little brother is who kind of taught me that I was a teacher because he was so I, I, I don't know if there's enough words our English language does not give us the language and words for all of the ways that we feel um, invisible and um, uglied by a system who that wasn't built for us didn't plan for us to be there was never meant for us to stay there or succeed and so even after um, getting my degree and, and teaching in schools, the schools in our district, there's educators who would not teach with me. They thought my having an education and being able to walk in as a teacher and be great at it was somehow diminishing to them. Like I, I cheated somehow, or oh, you, you're just one of those special. I'm like, really? Stop. So I have to hold circle. I have to know that other people are like-minded, that they want to have these conversations, that I, 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 I'm not making this up in my head. I, I, I didn't have words for it when I was younger. I just knew it's like, this is not right. Something's wrong. And ask any seven-year-old black girl. They'll tell you exactly. Like, oh, the teacher that I have, because we, we have to watch this for our survival. I can tell you what every teacher of mine did and who they were by how they, from the time they got out of their car in the parking lot, who they talked to, who they didn't, who they smiled at, who they didn't who got in trouble, who didn't, who, like all of that. And so the circles that I learned were at home because my parents would just ask two questions, like, how was your day? Like all parents, you know, how was your day? And then they'd say, well, how are you treated? And so that's when my, my siblings and I would get a chance to go, well, gosh, I, my teacher had me come into the front of the class and talk about my family today because this is my older sister's story. S um, a, a teacher would come and get her bring her to the class, sit her in front, like show and tell, to share about our, you know, sh my sister was just saying, well, yeah, my dad's a principal, my mom's a teacher, and they, they, the disbelief was so deep that, like, like, it drew an audience, like, oh, come, come listen to this little black girl talk, she's talking like, oh, like, like a zoo. So we had to have circle. We had to hold space. We had to hold space for our our, our feelings and what was real, what was going on. And we don't do that in our school systems. We don't make any space for that. We don't practice our humanity. We don't even have conversations like this. That's why I'm gonna make you get up in a minute in the chair and come with me. <laughs> so I'm just, I don't have a, I, I'm not um, trained in circle and tech. No, I'm not, because it's, it's how I live. It's how I navigate the world, how I, understand who I am, how I've learned to trust myself by being in circle. I can't be fully me without you. You are me, I am you. We, we are each other's medicine, I need you. And so if we're segregated and all separated down the hall and around the corner, well, how am I gonna get to be all fully human if I don't get to be with you? So whatever you take from Everything you experience today is that you are the circle. Your humanity is what holds space for somebody else's. And if you have your own, 
you've got plenty. <laughs> there's never, there's no shortage. <laughs> we're just stingy with it because we were taught that cruelty in school at recess, remember? What are you playing with her for? What are you gonna, mm, no, you can't play, mm -mm, no. We learned all that violence together. And so we need a place to unlearn it as well, right? So I just, I don't know, I just do that. I'm just doing that over here. Anybody wanna come? Yeah, look, cameraman, stop taking pictures. He's like, yes. <laughs> I was like, I can't even take a picture, that was too good. But basically, that's um, circle, and I just want to give you some of the framework of how I build that container so you can take whatever pieces that resonate with you on with you. You don't need to take notes. You don't need a special thing. Yes, I brought you some stuff to take with you, but you are, you are the notes. It's downloaded in you, and you've already come with it because you're here. You signed up. You pushed the button. You registered. You're already like, ooh, I'm in. So now that you're in, let's link arms in that solidarity and, and keep stepping forward. Because that's how we do it. I don't know who said we had to do this al you know, alone. Go clean up your racism and then come on. No, we don't do that. We do it, we do it together. I don't know how many people have told me, well, I've read, I've read this book. I've read the book. I'm like, mm, how, how do black and brown people know you read a book? I don't, I don't know. What are, you doing? what are you doing with it? So we have to practice this together. Okay? Now. I, I love this table because it didn't make me bend over and put everything on the floor. <laughs> but I have a centerpiece usually, and you don't need any of this to do a circle. I just put this out to help you remember the parts of you to practice and bring when you are in spaces with anyone. And so I, I like to bring this book. This is my um, The Emperor's New Clothes Story. This is my I'm a Truth Teller. I'm always gonna say, oop, your booty's out. Oop. But I never heard the part of the story that says, oh, come, come on, let me, get, let me get your elbow and help you get that tucked back in. So that's the part of the root of our youth, the root of us to remember that we are each other. Your booty's out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it literally, but. <laughs> but. The advocacy is about grabbing that elbow and come on, let's get that, let's get that tucked in, right? <laughs> he wants a picture of the book, not me. Okay. Um, and then this is my story. This is the black girl in suburbia story. Were you there when I showed this? I did this um, documentary um, in our district before. Oh, you were there? Are you? I you? Know, but I you? Heard you heard? About, oh, 500 people showed up. It was the first time. I was like, yeah. The only one Right, right, and the first time in this area's history to even like say the word black out loud, like we've been living this for, right, our story. And this is the first time I heard my story on a screen out loud, somebody said it. The racial isolation is deep. And then, ooh, I love, I love my rage. I count on my rage, it's the way I protect myself and it's the way I build. I used to didn't know what to do with my rage and I would, I would like, tear myself up, like chew my fingernails to the bone, pull my eyelashes out, like it's, cause it's in you, right? And like you, you don't know what to do. Um, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna hurt anybody else, but boy, I was tearing myself up. And so I finally learned like, oh, I need, I need, to, I need to have this move and I was alone in my rage. And until I was able to do more of this and circle and speak, I connected with people that I could like, oh, well, let's build this. And so not only do I just, you know, circle on Sundays for racial healing circle. Well, I'll show you. I'm going to have to show the slide in a minute. <laughs> Go, or you can show it now. Scroll down to the bottom. Here's what we built. <coughs> is every day of the week there's some circling going on. And it just came from w what we needed, what we needed. And so um, you've heard, Ar you know who Erin Jones is, right? Yes, yeah, so oh, I have her book on the table over there. Don't take, that's my copy, though, but take, get one, go get her book. So Erin and I started holding spaces um, for, uh, on Mondays, educators, advocates, youth, parents, everybody on Mondays. On Wednesdays is youth circles, so I hope to see all of you in the circles on Wednesday, 
um, as a place to uh, teach and help adults learn how to listen to youth, really. And even when you ask me to like come to this space, I'm like, what do you, what do you want with those youth? <laughs> what do, what do you, what, what, what's the compensation here? Because I, I really protective of them to not just extract. We all want what the youth say, but we're not gonna do what they say. And I can't tell you how, well, they'll tell you in a minute how sick of that they are. So I need to help that balance relationship. So adults are welcome to come, but youth are holding that space what you heard the youth say. Adults can come in at the end and say, I heard you say this, I heard you need this, I'm gonna work on this and I'll come back. And that's accountability to come back the next week and the next month to um, share what they did, how they're doing it, use whatever resource, like don't come ask youth to do anything unless you're ready to move and do it and prove it and come, otherwise we don't, no, we don't, nope, we're too, we need to be youth right now. Because if I'm gonna have to have youth be the adults that we adults won't be, we're gonna, we're gonna have to fight. We're gonna have to fight, that's not fair to them. That's not gonna happen. So these are the youth that um, are centered and empowered to just do what they already naturally know how to do without the barriers and the BS in the way, okay? Um, Thursday, Black Male Brotherhood. Friday, Becoming with Aaron and I again. Saturday, Sisterhood Self-Care at 3.30. Anybody want to join me in a, in a few minutes to do that? Sunday, Racial Healing Circle. And all of that is built out of the need of just, we need, to, we need to be together. We need to hold space and hold circle. So you're welcome to join any and all of that. These spaces are, are free. They're, what is it going to cost you to grow your humanity a little more? I don't know. I don't know. There's all the links. So if you go on my website, The Root of Us, and go to the calendar, you can find all those and jump in, okay? Um, okay, now, I, now I'm almost ready for you. You're just running around, Mr. Cannonball. <laughs> you get it all, did you get it all? Anyway, love, my love balances rage so I won't choke you. That's the point of that one. Okay. Um, in any space, I always ask, what do you need to be fully present? Fully present, because I'm the first one to, like, check out. And in my zoom space or on my name tag or when I'm in person um, we make a little name tent or a paper plate or something and I need three things always I need truth spoken um, or I'm out I can't play with you I might be in the same space but I will be completely gone if we're not going to have a foundation based in truth and speak about truth then I don't want to play with you and I need that truth and transparency so I can build trust to know if I want to Stay in the space and show up stronger. And then play with you some more. Build relationships so we can link arms like we did without ever meeting each other. And then I end up right here, and, right? That's how we did that. Truth, transparency. This League of Education Voters was, I'd never seen a space like that. You, you, want, you want youth to speak and tell the truth and you're not gonna stop them? You're not gonna interrupt them? You're not gonna, oh. Oh, I need to come do the, all of this with you. Come on. That's what we've been doing. And so to meet you today and finally be here, I'm like, yeah, yes. That's what, that's what all of this is for, is to build that relationship. Because that's all we have is relationships in each other. What, what are you going to take with you when you're gone? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you come by, you're going to do a little tour here. And at the end, you can end up with your chair up here closer. Um, use some, tell me what you need, because if you know I need the truth spoken, I need to know what you need too, so then we can hold that with and for each other. If you need a little more time to process, some extra patience, um, you need truth harder than what I'm talking about, well, then show that. Put that right here so we all can hold that with and for each other, okay? So that's your first little homework. Come get your thing. Um, you can check and see all the things I have on the table and what they might mean. Um, I love to show, um, where's Jonathan? Where are you? Your Band-Aids, you always remind me to bring. If everybody would carry Band-Aids that look like us, that's just a tiny thing you can do to stop making me show up having to be something I can never be. Even 
it's even worse when I'm hurt and I need a Band-Aid and then you're going to slap something on me that I can't do. Why do you make kids do that? I can't. I can't play with you. I can't play. Um, some of my talking pieces that we use when we're in person, I just have some of those around. I love my little pass to the next. I just have some of the elements just to remind me because I'm, I'm grounded in, in being a good, <laughs> being a good, um, I don't even like the word they use, good, because good, bad, binary. Like, I always ask people, finish that sentence. Good for who? Good for what? Because good is the only thing that hides what we don't want to address, right? Um, something you said, here it goes. I think of what you just said about mm. oh inclusiveness I don't practice inclusive because it means I have to leave something out of me to include into what in school systems is white supremacy normal normality and so I always ask them to finish that sentence too. include it into what what do I have to do to be included I have a picture of myself um, it's seven years old and my, my hair is straightened with a hot comb. And the picture is this. Because I like my hair and my poo said I had it. Why did you have to burn my head off and then get in front of the, why? And so looking at myself, at that seven-year-old, I already knew, I already knew what you're doing right now. Standing up and going, mm-hmm, what? Right? So, Always ask, include it into what, how? Why, why do you even need a table? I'm the table. We're the circle. And if the tables are in the way, then I'm outside. Over here, I have a big old circle. There's plenty of room. What do you need a table for? I'm not table. Okay, I'm, I'm just going off, aren't I? Okay, go ahead. Um, our identity sheet, Jonathan's gonna take you through. How do you practice your humanity? Just some things you can take with you. Um, and then over here, I'd love you to take pictures of all these beautiful books, boom, 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 because they're what you can use to help um, share your story, explain a point. Um, the, one of the race car one is beautiful, talking about privilege. Just um, my other partners that we partner with, Dr. Molly, Dr. Jen, all of their, the book lady is some of their collection and the pages down on the, on the table are from uh, my field guide. I just, you know, I get the question, it's like, how do we, how are we here right now? I've had the top of the line education, I've been to college, I've been at, how do I not know about our history, about us as people? Well, it's intentional, very intentional and on purpose. So don't waste time beating yourself up about it because that's, again, a white supremacy, con you know, might as well put the chain on your leg and then stay stuck there and cry about it. Or you can say, oh, I don't know that. I need to learn that. Let me get there. And so I kind of write a, a field guide like a Hansel and Gretel, a, a breadcrumb. You out. This is how you got there. I know exactly how because all the teachers that I'm from, that felt like love, that school. When I got to school, Wallingford, pre predominantly like, you know, in Seattle, Seattle school districts, it felt like a chokehold with a smile. That's not love. So, and I couldn't articulate that. I just knew this, this doesn't feel good, this isn't right, something's wrong, and I don't wanna play. So I would just skip away, and I'm thankful that has protected me, that seven-year-old who skipped away and didn't want my hair done, ran away from that. I don't, I don't wanna play with that. Um, because as an adult, I see, like, that whole system was set up for me to hate myself. So that's how come I know anti-blackness is rearing its, you know, head even more these days. Because I have it. It was taught to me. So but we, nobody gets to escape it. And um, I'm just happy I'm not wearing a bunny head outside the window that's really scary right now. <laughs> like, what is going on? Woo! Woo! Okay. Whoa! I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for that. Okay, 
let's get up and move a little bit, and I'll bring us back in a few minutes after we kind of take a look and come talk to me a little bit, okay? <laughs> oh, whoa. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring that in. Bring your phone and take some pictures, and then we'll go through some slides real quick. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my goodness. 